mean the word of the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Mr. Lego. Yes, sir, Mr. President, Mr. Nissing. Here. Mr. Chassett. Here. Mr. Costo. Here. Mr. Leonard is at work. Mr. Matarazzo. Here. Mr. Neenan. Here. Mr. Petrucci. Here. Mr. Stovar. Here. And Dr. Trey is out of town. Do you have a quorum, Mr. President? Thank you, Mr. Lego. You're welcome. Okay, I will now entertain a motion to approve the minutes for the H May 9th meeting <coughs> of 2016. Motion. Motion by Mr. Chassett. Second on motion. Second. Second, Second Dr. Crosshair. Any question on motion? Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Information, Dr. Ayers. Actually, we don't have any this week. We don't have a student of the month because of the summer, and last week we did over retirement, so nothing new to report. Okay, sign in sheet. Um, visitors, visitor re recognition of visitors. Uh, Mr. Jordan, Jeffrey Jordan, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Yeah. The rules. I'm sorry, Jeff. Hold on. I'm sorry? I thought everybody knew the plan. You're right. All right. It's now time for last recognition. The following rules are in effect. You must state your name, address, and group affiliation. Your statement will be limited to five minutes of duration. All statements will be directed to the president and no participant may address or question a board member individually. I may interrupt your statement if your statement is too lengthy, personal, direct, abusive, seem irrelevant. You have five minutes, Jeff. Okay. I'm Jeffrey Jordan. I am from Level Green. I'm here tonight representing the Level Green Lions Club and the Community Women's Club of Level Green. Uh, that's approximately 76 residents in Level Green. Uh, an issue that, that you're all aware of, uh, we have a community sign that sits at the corner of the property at the intersection of Route 130 and Murraysville Road. Uh, that sign has been there for just short of 50 years. It's been a project of the Lions Club, of the Women's Club, and of various uh, community residents over that time. Uh, I myself volunteered and uh, to, to actually change the, the letters on that sign during the heat and the cold for five whole years uh, because I'm a good sport. Uh, but the, the sign itself is uh, up for grabs in terms of what happens to that property. Because it's at the corner of that oddly shaped <coughs> large parcel of property, uh, we have since approached the township before tonight and we're coming to you. Uh, to ask for your advocacy in preserving that corner of the property. Uh, not only is there the community sign, the double-sided community sign, there's also a flagstaff that was placed there by the Women's Club. There's also a small memorial, a war memorial, that had been moved from the Level Green Elementary property uh, in the 1980s, I believe, because of a religious reference. Uh, that is all on the site. So what I've come tonight to, to let you know, the Level Green Board, the, the, the uh, Lions Club Board and the Women's Club Board have together committed to pay up to $500 in expenses related to actually coming up with the legalese related to uh, your effort at making this happen. Uh, we, we're aware that you can't cover uh, the legal expense of what this might incur. Um, I, I have contacted the Women's Club and I do speak directly on their behalf and with their uh, blessing, as uh, as you probably know, our two groups have uh, been been the, the people upkeeping that site for for many many years, and we would like to continue that uh, for the next 50 years as a service to the community. Um, we would continue to upkeep the land. Uh, the, the the mowing has been done by PTARC and by the township up till this point, but we uh, as two community groups would take on the expense of maintaining. Uh, the grass and the, uh, the layout of that site so that it is an attractive part of the land. It's uh, something that uh, enhances the landscape and, and doesn't deter someone who wants to buy the parcel of property that's, that's, uh, that's attached. Uh, we appreciate your advocacy in the past and uh, if you have any questions for me, I am not a property lawyer. <laughs> I can't answer any really uh, specific questions about how this might work. But this is where we are in, in this process. Okay, man. Uh, we exchanged emails. And, yes. Uh, also, Larry Harrison, you'd be aware that the property's going up for sale probably by the end of this month, 
and, and you should see for sale signs up there. Okay. We just talked to the realtor, and I wasn't aware of the figure he told me the value of that corner is. And I told him the concerns of the Lower Green Women's Club because I think they've been, like you said, 50 years. Sure. They've been very cooperative, the sign on both sides. Now, I'm not in full agreement on the monument and the flagpole, okay? It's, uh, the sign has been much well kept compared to the monument and the flagpole. The flagpole has a flag on it, and I know if I'm just going to renovate the BY apartment with a flag up. And if it's up all night, 24 hours, that must be lit. That's a federal law. I was told that by a traffic American agent, so we have to put a light down there. Right. That one in the corner is not where yours is right now. It's not lit. Okay, and the monument, and I offered this to uh, Larry Harrison before, uh, Trapper American Legion and Ray Peduzzi, they put a beautiful, for a small borough like Trapper, a beautiful memorial park down there. It's about two blocks down from Jimmy Matters where he grew up. And, and Ray said he would gladly transfer that monument down there. Now, the value that they told us that that corner lot could have would be $25,000, because that's where the new people would put their sign. Okay, so. But we did discuss, and I mentioned the situation with, with the Women's Club and the Lions Club, all right? There is an agreement that can, if I'm wrong, Mr. Brungo, please correct me. Okay, he's our solicitor. We can get a sign access into the sales agreement if the new people want to put a sign there. That will give you people the right to use their sign. At no cost to you. Well, it might not there be a cost if we write it in, it would be a cost now. Well, that, that would be subject to negotiations okay. with but the property could, owner. But that's, uh, the figure is high, but we're, we're not just forgetting about you. But the, I didn't realize the value, of course, what I know about real estate, putting it in my little finger, but to, between $25,000 dollars for that corner where they were going to put a sign, that is pretty dramatic. I didn't think it would be that high. But uh, it's been discussed, and we're going to do everything we can to give you guys availability to it. And somebody local buys it, they just might let you keep that sign there with no problem. It only depends who, who the next owner is going to be. But, uh, and I've, I've said this so many times to my fellow workers, they're tired of me here saying it, but uh, I have a great appreciation for what the Level Green Lions, have, especially the Women's Club, have done there because I've dealt with them personally. They've been very, especially the elementary schools in Trafford and also at Level Green. They've been very, very nice, very cooperative. Okay. Do you, can you suggest any next steps on our part? I have to see what the potential buyer would be, I guess. I'd yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think that, um, and you'd have to take a look at what your potential options are that you would address with a, a potential buyer as to yeah. you know, what they would be willing to do, what their intent of the use of the property would be. That would dictate pretty much what might happen. Okay, well, thank you for all your, uh, your consideration. We thank you for it. all your volunteer work through all thank the decades. You. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Robert Connington. Back again. <clears throat> Robert Connington, 33 Country Farm Lane, um, Harrison City. I'm here to speak again on what I spoke about last week. Apparently, I must have spoke to the wall. Um, I have some serious questions that I'd like the board to address. I'd like to know, I mean, the purpose of a board is to oversee to make sure the administration doesn't run amok. And it's, you're supposed to be a watchdog, not a lapdog. But um, the appeal that I understand was voted for, which if it was voted for in an executive session, I think there's some violation of sunshine laws there. But from what I understand, you guys are appealing the decision that was uh, granted by the arbitrator. Now, I want to read something very short here for grounds. When you go to, I don't know if the board's aware of this, but when you go to appeal an arbitrator's decision, you're no longer appealing any merits of the case whatsoever. I have a quick little thing here. Grounds for vacating an arbitration award. In order to have an arbitration award vacated, it is usually necessary to demonstrate at least one of the following in court, that there's a serious conflict of interest in part of the neutral arbitrator, the award was not final and thus failed to constitute a definitive end to the issue, or the award covered an issue that was outside the scope of the arbitration agreement. Arbitrator fraud or misconduct claims are rare because actual evidence of arbitrator misconduct is hard to come by. Further, when force courts are faced with motions to vacate an arbitration award, they will generally only look at the procedural details of the arbitration, not the substantive details. 
This means the courts will not look at the merits of the case unless the claim involves the award itself being unreasonable or unethical. Unfortunately, and ultimately, fraud is very unlikely to be a winning argument in the court unless there is definitive evidence. An arbitrator's binding decision isn't fraud, you know, just because it's unfavorable. Um, it comes back to the binding arbitration. So by the board agreeing to go forward with this case, you're no longer going after the original claimant. You're going after the arbitrator. I think you guys paid, I'm not exact on the money, I think you paid 8000 and this other one paid, you just paid $16,000 that we've already paid. I find a problem as a business owner that you're being advised. And once again, you all look capable of thinking for yourself. But if you're being advised and going by a recommendation of the solicitor, he's the only one that stands for fiduciary gain from going on with this appeal right now. I'm not going to make no money out of it. The school district's not going to make any money out of it. Mr. Brungo will. And I think if we're giving to charity, I could give you a whole list of St. Jude and everyone's, you know, that needs charity more than Mr. Brungo does. So I just want to make sure the board is aware that when they go after this, we're no longer going after the original case. We're going to say that the arbitrator that you hired, that you paid, that you picked, is fraudulent. That he was actually deceitful in his decision. And if you guys, I'm sure you were made aware of, there's a 21-page decision. The arbitrator could have simply came out and said, I award on the plaintiff or the grievance path, as he refers to him, um, for this thing. But he didn't. He took the time to write a 21-page explanation detailing everything. And, and in general, he says, there was no merit. He could find no evidence of anything. Um, no evidence of misconduct. No evidence of that. Mr. Brungo stated last week, with his giant statement that took more time than we did speaking, about the safety of the children. That sounds great. But who was looking for the safety of my children? My son who was here when you guys added, tried to give legitimacy to something that was illegitimate when you removed the teacher that we brought to your attention the year prior. My son, within a week, was suspended from school for a fight that we said in a meeting that day would happen. Who was here to protect him? Who's here to protect my daughter from middle school that she started getting harassed at middle school over? Rumors and innuendos. I sat in a meeting with these guys and they said, oh no, nobody will know. Well, while we're in a meeting, we're showing them Snapchats that my daughter's forwarding me from college of some kid that's a student at the school. Oh no, you did, did Mr. you know, all this stuff's coming back and forth. Kids are so fast, they're ten times faster than us with this thing. But you guys, by carrying this on further, you just keep adding legitimacy to something that was so illegitimate. Read the 21 paper brief. I'm sure it's, it's public knowledge. I want to get it posted online so the rest of the public so I can quit going to restaurants and have people eating dinner, whisper and point. That's the girl right there. That's the girl right there. You guys just keep adding more and more legitimacy. If an arbitrator that you hired and paid found no evidence, he didn't waver, he never wavered in anything on it. He ultimately, his decision was for full reinstatement, full reimbursement, school record to be cleared, employment record to be cleared. There wasn't a maybe, an if, anywhere in that statement. I've read all 21 pages. So if you guys want to go ahead and do this and waste more taxpayers' money, now we're not saying it's just the teacher did it, but this arbitrator that has an impeccable record, then he's no good either. All right. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Just for one thing, you mentioned the Sunshine Law. When the French Sunshine Law first came out, the word was clear. The C stands, which you're allowed to have just board only at. C is for confidentiality, L is for labor, E is for employees, A is for attorney, and R is for real estate. Mr. Okay. Devins was an employee. Correct. Okay, so we're covered by the Sunshine Law. We do not violate the Sunshine Law. That's all I'm going to tell you. The rest of it, I respect what you're saying. And uh, Well, then can I ask you a question on that? Sure. Was there an actual roll call vote taken in the meeting last week? There's no... you're spending taxpayer money. There is, there is no need... And the board has asked me to make an announcement. Uh, I can make that announcement now, I'm going to make it now. Uh, or, or I can wait till later. But the, the, let me make the announcement. You run the show. Mr. Coddington, I would ask that you provide the same respect that I've provided you over the months. Thank you. I've been authorized and directed by the Board of School Directors to appeal the arbitration decision of arbitrator Matthew Frankowitz dated May 17, 2016 to the Westmoreland County Court of Common Pleas. All right, now having said that, you've said some things that are in, incorrect. 
The basis of the appeal is not that Matt Frankowitz engaged in any way, shape, or form in fraud. The, the, the basis of the appeal is either that his decision did not draw its essence from the collective bargaining agreement, the terms and conditions of the collective bargaining agreement, which is very legitimate, and also that his decision, even though it may have drawn its essence from the collective bargaining agreement, violates public policy. And there have been cases that my firm has dealt with in which we have had arbitration decisions overturned when an arbitrator failed to notice that child safety is a, a, uh, a viable public policy that needs to be enforced and protected. And basically, there's been no allegation by this board that what this gentleman engaged in was criminal in nature. And there were inferences in the last meeting that it, because it wasn't criminal, he should be back. That's not the issue. Even if the police find that there was nothing that was a crime, there may still be a proper basis for action on the part of this board. Improper communications with a, a student, numerous emails having nothing to do with the educational program that are personal in nature for the purpose of forming a friendship, not a relationship between a teacher, not a relationship between a teacher and a student, but a friendship, purchasing gifts for a student, exchanging music CDs back and forth over a number of months, immediately continuing numerous email exchanges upon the student's graduation, whenever the individual was told to cease and desist. On the day of graduation, immediately they begin again. Emailing the former student immediately upon her turning 18 years of age about now being legal. Developing a personal friendship while the young lady is a student, which resulted in her spending time at the teacher's home on numerous occasions during the summer immediately following graduation. These are all things that, although not criminal in nature, are still inappropriate for a teacher to engage in as it relates to a student who has gained their trust. And that is the basis for this board deciding that there is a violation, that the, the arbitrator mistakenly violated the public policy that dictates that this board preserve the safety and welfare of children. Except for mine. I may I respond to that since he was so lengthy. I'll give you real brief. That's a make it real brief. Well, Mr. Brown, you're, you're, five again, minutes you're, you're very good at doing that. Last week he started out saying in the light of the plum incident. Plum is sexual, sexual, sexual. As you stated right there, this case never had anything to do with sexual. But you threw that in last week, you know, in the light of the plum allegations. This has nothing to do with plum. Once again, communications, you guys have rewritten your rules since then. The administration has rewritten the rules on teacher conduct with students. But at the time that this happened, there was nothing in there that said a teacher couldn't go to a child's graduation party, couldn't give a child a gift at a graduation party. Was there a written? Was there anything written prior to this thing that said that was illegal? Violation no. of school rules. You're correct. Okay, Mr. Cosby, you're done. I'm done. Gina, got it. I'll be back every week. All right, my name is Gina Coddington. I live at 33 Country Farm Lane, Harrison City. And I'm not here tonight to speak about Mr. Dibbins and about the fact that he's a nice guy or a great teacher, a mentor, or a life coach. That was established last <coughs> week. That was established in the arbitration. And it was also spoken by Mr. Scott Inglace under oath that he's a nice guy, a good teacher, first at school and last to leave. I'm here to question and to bring to light the lack of transparency that the board is creating by possibly going forward with this appeal. The statement last week by Mr. Brungo that the student safety and protection of all students is and must be of the utmost importance apparently does not apply to my children. When this all happened, um, as first rumor, we were never contacted about it. Mr. Inglace said that we should not be contacted about it. In March 2015, when this busted wide open, we sat in a meeting that we called because we were not contacted ever by administration about this. My daughter was backdoored by her friend at the advice of your solicitor because she was 18. But in your statement, you said regardless of age, they're to be protected. So which way is it? We found out about this, called a meeting with the school. They acted like they didn't know what we were coming up here for. But they were all present within 15 minutes of our phone call. 
without Mr. Brungo, their beloved solicitor, who should have been there at least by maybe telephone. We do have technology. While we were sitting in that meeting, we were, I was on my phone receiving multiple Snapchats and emails forwarded to me from my kids that were being sent by students, past and present, some during the school day, during that meeting, from students within this school when they should have been having class, saying nasty things about my daughter or confirming the false rumors. I showed them to administration in that meeting. They had no action and nothing to say about it. We also asked during that meeting what they were going to do to protect our son, who was still a student at the school. And he was our biggest concern. Not our daughter who was out of here, because we felt that she was in no harm and never was. They failed to protect him. And within the end of the week, he got into a fight because he was tired of hearing the rumors and being picked on and bullied for all purposes because of the lack of judgment and the lack of action by the administration. And he was suspended for three days and imposed a fine that ultimately got wiped clean because no other incident happened within 90 days. But I think that's because it was the end of school and he wasn't in school to continue the abuse, which carried over to his senior year. And this also trickled down to my middle schooler who comes up here next year as a freshman. And now that you're deciding to go forward with this, regardless of what your basis is and what Mr. Brungo, who is the only one to benefit from this? This is going to bust it wide open again for her. And I ask, what are you going to do to protect her? You're going to go ahead and you're going to put this out there. You tried to keep it quiet in the beginning. It hit social network that morning before we hit this school with a meeting. It's not going to be kept quiet. And everybody's going to know about it. And my youngest child who's still in your school is going to suffer because of it. The, this, um, as I, I said, how are you going to protect her? Um, this was the, all on rumor, and it was false, and it was determined unfounded by an independent <coughs> arbitrator who was unbiased, regardless of how you feel he violated whatever rule you want to say, Mr. Brungo. They gave him full award and 100% reinstatement effective immediately. And I'm also wondering how many of you, and I think I know the answer to that, bothered to read 21 pages of the decision. It's the 21 pages is a novel. Take your time, do your jobs as a board, and read the decision. I did. It's solid. Um, the information that you didn't bother to read um, it is going to be known by the taxpayers of this community. And they're going to see clearly that the slam dunk case that you were led to believe it was going to be in the beginning is not actually true. So I think it's time for you to move forward from this, not pay any more money. The solicitor, like I said, is the only one that stands to benefit from this, monetarily mostly. And it's time to move forward, lick your wounds, and get to more important issues. And I do want to ask you, Penn Trafford football went to Heinz Field. It was stressed in multiple emails that it was a school event, and all actions were supposed to be like it was a school event. So how is it that it's OK that multiple teachers attended tailgates with students present where there was alcohol served and consumed, all while the students were there? And to quote Mark Twain, it's never wrong to do the right thing. So do the right thing. Don't turn a blind eye to things like what happened at Heinz Field and all the teachers drinking with the students at tailgates. But want a land-based teacher who tried to do good by students but got caught up in a, okay, you know. Ready. Your time has been up. Thank you, Fred. Oh. That's the first time I heard that, and I was at Heinz Field too, that I heard that, what you just said about teaching drinking with students. And I was at Heinz Field. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Gina I'm glad Clinton. you were there, but I was there too. And so was I there too. And I was outside in the park lot. I did not see any of that mixing like you just said. Gina Connington. Mr. Inglace was at the I mean, Paduzzi Nicole tailgate. Connington. Nicole Connington. Mr. Paduzzi was, or Mr. Inglace was at the Paduzzi tailgate with kids drinking. My name is Nicole Connington. I live at 33 Country Farm Lane. Those were my parents that just went, and I am the supposed victim, whatever you want to say it. Um. I think the only reason I'm speaking right now is because my little sister 
who is coming to the school next year, 14 years old, you know, this whole thing doesn't matter. Sure, I was affected by it. Sure, it was a huge part of my life for the better part of two years now. But the fact that it trickled down so far that it affects my little sister, that she wrote a letter and wanted me to read it to you guys tonight, which I'm not going to do because at 14 years old, she was a lot more mean and vicious than I would have been. But um, the fact that it affected her so greatly that at 14 years old and coming to the high school, she wanted to write a letter to her school board saying how she feels about it and how she wishes that a teacher like Mr. Divins would be in the high school for her and other students like he was for me because as most of you know, I sat through that arbitration with you. He was and still is one of the best people I know. But I just don't think that I should have to stand here and ask a group of adults to think before they act on something because we were taught that in kindergarten and I think that should continue on all throughout life to think before you act. And I just think that this whole thing is, like my parents have said time and time again, based off rumor and innuendo. I mean, I think I know it best. I was hit with, I couldn't even tell you what kind of rumors and what I've been through on social media and what even my own friends have said to me through the past two years. But um, I just think that before you act and appeal this, that you should think about who it's affecting. Because it's not just affecting one person. It's affecting many people. It's affecting a 14-year-old who's coming to this high school who shouldn't have to be affected by it. And just to finish what my mom said, I watched a teacher do a peg stand. So there were teachers drinking at Heinz Field. So when you have problems like that, and teachers in the school that I'm sure do far worse than what Mr. Divins has been accused of, which half of it, that Mr. Brungo said, shouldn't even be an issue because I was graduated. It, I was an adult. I was able to make my own decisions, as was he. I wasn't a student at the school anymore. It shouldn't be an issue. I think there's much bigger problems in the school to focus on than this case any longer. So that's kind of mixed up. I'm very nervous. I'm so sorry. But that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, you did fine, Nicole. I'm sorry. Just think, please, think before you act because this has gone on way too long and affected someone like myself and Mr. Dimmons and my family and other students way too far. So, thank you for your time. Thank you, Nicole. Um, now we're going to itinerary for tonight. Chair's report. I want to entertain a motion now to, to approve the month of May 2016 extracurricular fund and, and April 16th approval present presented made as part of official minutes. Motion. Motion Mr. Kachasik. Second. Second on the motion. Second, Mr. Name. Any question on motion? Question. Question. All favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Entertain a motion of payment of bills for June 2016. Motion. Motion, Mr. Kuchaski. A second on motion? Second. Second, Dr. Caution. Any question on motion? Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Old business. Uh, we have not received any first. Okay, executive session. Executive session was conducted prior to the e e this evening's meeting to discuss real estate matter, litigation matters, personnel, including staffing needs. The board also received information on budget matters, food service, and curriculum. New business, Athletic Service Curricular, Dr. Kosho. Thank you, Mr. President. We'll do a few things. We <coughs> accept the following resignations effective at the end of the 2015-16 school year unless otherwise noted. Marty Coma, FBLA co-sponsor. Mark Tonello, Assistant Varsity Wrestling Coach. Jeffrey Fox, Coral Director, Elementary co-sponsor. Brooke Kuchak, Computer Tech Assistant McCullough, Carol Palmer, FBLA co sponsor. And a motion with Dr. Kosh. Any second on the motion? Second. Second, Ms. Sissy. Any question on motion? motion? Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. <coughs> we move to employ the following personnel for the 2016 17 season. Employment is contingent upon the receipt of all necessary certification, documentation, and acceptance of Act 34 151 114 waivers from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. 
Josh Bujikowski, assistant band instructor, a salary of $616. Doug Kelly, ninth grade head boys basketball coach, a salary of $3,758. Lisa Popovich, cap sponsor, effective at the beginning of the 2016-17 school year, at a salary of $3,756. John Snyder, seventh and eighth grade football coach, previously a volunteer coach, a salary of $4,439. Carrie Yacomelli, 7th and 8th grade, football coach, his salary of 4439 I have a motion to adopt a caution. A second on motion? Second. Second by Mr. Manor has a question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion <laughs> passed. And final one, approve the following volunteer coaches. All co co coaching volunteers must have Act 34, 151, and 114 waivers on file with the athletic director. They are all football volunteer coaches, Zach Crossy, Chuck Fontana, and Brandon Lathun. Motion passed. The concert. second on motion by Mr. Dissing. Any question on motion? Question. Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. That would be all, Mr. President. Thank, thank you. you, Dr. Kosciuk. Budget and Finance, Mr. Kachassi. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I uh, recommend that the 2016-17 school district budget be scheduled in the total amount of $53,517,497, properly advertised in accordance with school laws of Pennsylvania, be adopted and filed in the official board minutes to include the following taxes as shown in the budget. Real estate tax at a rate of 80.25 mills, $8.025 on each $100 uh, assessed valuation taxable property. The real estate tax for the Allegheny County portion located in Trafford Borough is 16.2 <coughs> mills. Per capita tax, section 679 of the School Laws of Pennsylvania at a rate of $5 on each eligible, eligible resident. And Act 511 taxes as listed and the 2016-17 budget breakdown as listed. Uh, can I just make one comment on that, Mr. Kachasi? You may. Uh, of the increase this year, uh, one mill went toward the general operating budget. Uh, that mill comes out annually on the average uh, property at $28.11. Uh, the board also has decided to dedicate 1.4 mills for $39 uh, $39.36 per home for uh, 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 capital improvements throughout the district which are sorely lacking in our buildings other than the high school. So the total increase of 2.4 mills averages $60.17 or about $5 a month for the average homeowner. Any other board comment at this time? It's open to the board member. 1.4 uh, mills set aside that will go in a capital reserve budget specifically used for uh, needs Various, of the existing buildings. Correct. And that total is approximately just a little bit under $5 million that we'll be able to generate over 15 years to do that. So mm -hmm. basically we, we will be using that 1.4 mill to uh, take out a bond issue. Uh, it'll be for a term of 15 years and this will take care of it quite a bit of our problems that we have with roofs, boilers, uh, buildings that are going to be left in our district operating for years to come that need defense. That is correct. <coughs> I mean, the current budget per building does not allow for uh, purchases of this substantial nature like roofs or paving or uh, right. boilers. Correct. You are correct, sir. And just so the public knows, we <coughs> had a uh, billion grounds meeting last Thursday, June 9th, and uh, Mr. Bracco gave us a list of all the needs of all the buildings, and our buildings are their own. And uh, the figure, if I remember, the total figure, if I'm wrong, Mr. Uh, Lego, $9 million was what was needed? It was a little bit over $9 million, dollars, correct. And uh, this raises approximately $5 million, and we have declining enrollment, the closing of schools is going to be coming up. At least a discussion. And, well, that's true, it's a new discussion, but it's also going to have to be addressed. But um, there will be a public meeting to it. People will be well, more than welcome to come. <coughs> um, it's not going to be easy. I've been a part of closing three elementary schools with uh, my tenure here with uh, Claire H., Penn, and Trafford, and it's not easy. The emotions get high, the understanding gets unreasonable, and um, the finance or finances, when you have declining enrollment and uh, multi millions of dollars going to a building 60, 70, 80 years old, you have to start reevaluating and start condensing. So, this has been addressed in a previous prospectus by Dr. Harris, has sent out, and it is something that's going to be coming up. 
Okay, any more discussion on the millage increase? Okay, a motion by, Doc, uh, by Mr. Kuchaski. Uh, Second on motion? Second. Second by Dr. Koster. Any question on motion? Question. All in favor to signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Move to grant the administration permission to advertise for bids for those items and projects requiring competitive bidding in accordance with statute and appearing in the 2016 school year budget as well as the current construction budget. I have a motion by Mr. Kuchaski. Any second on motion? <coughs> second. Second by Mr. Nick. Any question on motion? Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Move to authorize the administration to pay all end of the year invoices which are part of the 2015-16 school district operations or included in the current budget and to make end of year budgetary transfers. I have a motion by Mr. Kuchaski. Is second on motion? Second. Second by Mr. Matarez. Any question on motion? Question. Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Move that the following banks be named depositors for the 2016-17 school year for the accounts as listed below. Uh, most of the categories. Question. Second by Ms. Nissen. Question. All, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Move to authorize the administration to make payments in line to $23,905.80 for credits earned by professional employees in accordance with the negotiated agreement. The list as presented to the board showing the individual payments due will be filed with the official minutes of this meeting. Uh, motion, Mr. motion, Mr. Kuchaski, is second on motion? Second. Second, Mr. Navy. Any question on motion? Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. <coughs> Move to assign $2 million or $2,167,000 of fund balance for future retirement and or building project expenses. Motion, Mr. Kuchaski, is second on motion? Second. Second, Mr. Navy. Any question on motion? Question. Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Just another quick uh, comment on that. <coughs> uh, once we see our way to the top of the pension increase, which should be in the next year or so, uh, if there's money still remaining in that des designated fund balance, we'll add that to the $5 million for the improvements to take care of that list of Mr. Brackett's. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lincoln. You're welcome. Continue, Mr. Kuchessi. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to approve the expenditures for the high school innovation project according to the schedule as listed. Motion, Mr. Kuchessi. Any second on motion? Second. Second, Mr. Navy. Any question on motion? motion? Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. All right, before uh, reading uh, the next motion, I want to, uh, we had discussed uh, change orders last week. Uh, four additional change orders has uh, been uh, made aware to the board that uh, Scott, uh, Mr. Inglace will uh, speak of right now. And uh, Mr. President, if you're willing, I'd like to at least give uh, uh, anybody in the in audience uh, opportunity to comment on these four new changes before we go ahead and approve the expenditures. First, I'll let Mr. Inglis on the floor, then I'll turn Yeah, we, we initially uh, uh, presented approximately $6,000 $6, worth of change orders, but since then, we did get some pricing on some other change orders, and we did want to get that approved this month because, as you know, we don't have a board meeting in July, and we don't want to hold up uh, the project. So we are asking you to uh, approve a change order to fix uh, some cracks uh, in the tennis court. Uh, that's going to be about $8,239. We are asking you to approve <coughs> power washing and regrouting of the pool. Um, a lot of the uh, grout is, is loose and needs some repair there. That's going to be uh, a change order for amount of $36,756. And we also have a part of the pool wall uh, when we demoed some of the, uh, the duct work. There was uh, finishes and exposed uh, block that needs to be patched and, and finished. So that change order is going to be $19,060. Then we have one more in the amount of $6,642. It's uh, to install in a an exhaust fan underneath the, uh, the pool area where we have a fan. We need a fan to, to uh, provide exhaust and make sure the chemicals are exhausted properly in that pool area. So those four changes added to the ones we uh, presented last, last week will total a grand total of $76,607. Okay, any questions? Oh, you said one. About the 10 sports uh, was over there the other day. So, um, they have all the, uh, the nets down and everything. Right. Is that uh, that refinishing of that will make that basically. Are you talking about the, the, the old tennis courts? The old, the old tennis courts were the, the fabric was ripped off. Now they have to uh, yeah. take uh, 
there's a lot of cracks that were right. there that they didn't know were there when they uh, removed the fabric, so they have to fix the cracks. Then the paver is, is coming with the next couple of weeks to repave that whole area. So we ready to go? Well, I mean, there's more coming, I guess, is the mask. We have uh, tennis starts on August 8th. We're concerned that uh, they're not going to be ready by August 8th because you need 30 days for the paint and uh, the line striping to cure. So that's that's going to be an issue. So we hope to uh, get this done ASAP so that we don't uh, have delays. I mean, is it will this cover the work that's required to finish the, the courts? Yeah, finishing them. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's all I'm Okay, Mr. Kuchas, when we open up to the public, any public comments on the change orders? Okay, a motion, Mr. Kuchasik. Need a second on the motion? I didn't actually read the motion. Oh. Thank you, Mr. That's President. We went through all of them. Yeah, right? I don't want to discuss it, so. All right. Move to approve the following change orders as uh, reviewed last week and reviewed just now as listed. All right. A motion, Mr. Kuchasik. Any second on the motion? Second. Second with Dr. Caution. Any question on the motion? Question. Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Move to approve the purchase lease, one dollar buyout of 2,215 Acer Chromebooks from American Cap Capital for the 2016-17 school year at a cost of $160,000 per year for three, three years to $480,000. I have a motion by Mr. Chaskin. A second on motion? The, the, just to clarify, this is placing computers, right? This is taking the budget money. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Correct. Right. So this, is, this is just a switch of money. Not, technology, right? Right. This is, this is, this is not new money. No. We're, we're trading out the, the, the max and purchasing the Chromebooks. We need to have a motion okay. to approve the financing. Okay. okay. No new, no new uh, motion will be needed to That's cover this. Motion, Mr. Chastain. Second motion? Second. Second, Mr. Nibby. Any question on motion? Question. question. Motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. That's all I have this evening, Mr. President. No, uh, you really don't, Mr. Chastain. You are now billion grounds. Congratulations. Yeah, <laughs> on here. to accept the following retirement res uh, resignation, Timothy Gardner, effective June 30th, 2016. Motion, Mr. Kachasny. A second on the motion? Second. Second, Dr. Kosh. Any question on motion? Question. 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 All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Um, Tim put his resignation at the end of the year, and after, like, he, I even invited him last week, but he wasn't able to make it. He was already starting his retirement because he had enough vacation days to accrue, but he would definitely be missed. A great job. He was at Penn Middle for years as the head building maintenance. Yeah. And then the last maybe five, six years, he actually took a job with going around all the buildings <coughs> um, maintenance groups. So I really do appreciate all the skills he brought to us. Just wanted to throw that out there since he wasn't here. Okay. Continue, Mr. Kuchessing. The motion's been read. Looking for a second. I thought you were going to second it. Okay, second question. Again. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Uh -huh. And finally, Mr. President, <coughs> move to approve the contract with the lease real estate for the marketing of the former P Tark building. I have motion, Mr. Chastain. Any second on the motion? Second. Second, Mr. Dr. Koshio. Uh, before we go into questions, I want to thank Dr. Koshio for doing some research on this and getting us a very reasonable rate for the uh, real estate. Thank you, Mr. Cog. Dr. Mm -hmm. Koshio. I have a motion by in the second. I need a question on motion. Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. That's all I had to do this evening, Mr. Brother. Employee relations, negotiations, transportation. Mrs. Issing. I'm going to report, Mr. <coughs> okay, thank you, Mrs. Issing. Food service, Dr. Trey. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to award the food service bid for the 2016-17 school year to Aramark. Bids were opened in, at a public session on Thursday, June 2nd, 2016 at 1 p.m. at Penn Trafford High School. A motion, Mr. Naming. A second on motion? Second. Second, Mr. Kachaski. Any question on motion? Question. Aye. Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion no. passed. Wait, do we have a yeah. one? We had it passed. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Pull the, uh, pull the board. I missed that. Sorry, uh, Mr. It's okay, Mrs. Issing. Yes. Mr. Kachasik. Yes. Dr. Koshko. Yes. Mr. Matarazzo. No. Mr. Nemec. Yes. Mr. Petrucci. Yes. Mr. Stovar. Yes. Dr. Trey's absent. Uh, you have six affirmative, one negative. <coughs> Right. Thank you, Mr. Well, I apologize, uh, Mr. Matarazzo. I hear you now. I apologize. Okay. 
Uh, move to approve. I'm oh, sorry, Mr. Nimi. That's my part, man. I know. <laughs> I'm going ahead of myself there. I move to approve the following breakfast and lunch prices for the 2016-17 school year. Elementary is 220. Elementary premium is 255. Middle school is 255. Middle school premium 320. High school price structure. $3.20, $3.85, and $4.50 bundle meals. Uh, breakfast is $1.30, reduced breakfast $0.30, cents. reduced lunch is $0.40, cents. and adult is $3.95. All of these are uh, no change with the exception of the high school price structure. Okay, motion, Mr. Nimmick, a second on motion? Second. Second, second Mr. Nimmick, any question on motion? Question. Question, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Move to approve the following milk prices for the 2016-17 school year. There will be no increase from 2015 to 2016. White and chocolate, both 70 cents a half pint. And motion, motion, name again. Second on motion? Second. Second by Dr. Kosher. Any question on motion? Question. Question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passed. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Nimi. First on our curriculum, Mr. Stovar. Lots of reading. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Move to approve additional substitute teachers and support personnel for the month of June 2016. Motion by Mr. Stover. Any second on motion? Second. Second Dr. Kosher. Any question on motion? Question. Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Move to approve the tentative assignments of professional personnel as represented or uh, presented by the superintendent for the 2016-17 school year. For the most part, the assignments were recommended by the principals. Final assignments will be reviewed and approved by the board prior to the deadline date of August 19, 2016. And motion, Mr. Stover. Second on motion? Second. Second, Mr. Kachaski. Any question on motion? Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. I uh, move to employ the following school physicians and dentists for the Penn Trafford School District for the 2016-17 school year. Uh, Dr. Wong, Dr. Bakshi, Bakshi and Dr. Uh, Gates, uh, all for the prices listed. Uh, motion, Mr. Stover, any second on motion? Second. Second, Mr. Nimi, any question on motion? Question. Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Move to accept and file the official ratings for instructional personnel for the 2015-16 school year as determined by the principals and superintendent. I have a motion by Mr. Stilbury. Second on motion? Second. Second, Mr. Kuchaski. Any question on motion? Question. Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Uh, move to extend supplemental contracts to the following personnel for the 2016-17 school year as recommended by the superintendent. Salaries will be determined in accordance with the negotiated contract. Uh, counselors are Megan McGraw, David Martin, uh, Cynthia Oshevsky, Linnea uh, Sherman, Lauren Trail, and Christine Zona. Uh, most of Mr. Stover. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. We got Mr. Martin. Jeff Newsom also. Okay. I have a motion, Mr. Stover. Any second on motion? Second. Second, Mr. Nimmick. Again, question on motion? Question. Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Move to authorize the administration to post, advertise, interview, and hire candidates for any vacancy that occur prior to the August meeting. Motion, Mr. Stover. Any second on motion? Second. Second, Mr. Manarez. Any question on motion? Question. Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Move to approve the settlement of case matter uh, of the, the settlement of case matter Judith Bellowitz versus Penn Trafford High School or Penn Trafford School District number 13-1941 in the amount of $25,000 to be paid for by the district's insurance carrier. I have a motion, from Mr. Tilbury. Any second on motion? Second. Second, Mr. Kuchaski. Any question on motion? Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Move to accept the following resignation. Jenna Huffman, fourth grade teacher at Level Green, effective August 5th, 2016. Motion, Mr. Stover. Any second on motion? Second. Second, Mr. Manarazzi. Any question on motion? Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. She will be missed. She, um, She's moving with her husband. He has a different job, so it was a last minute resignation, but she would definitely be missed. Um, move to approve the agreement and release of student uh, number GR2015160001. 
I have a motion, Mr. Stover. Any second on the motion? Second. Second with Dr. Caution. Any question on the motion? Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Uh, approved, uh, move to approve the following intern placement from Penn State Commonwealth University. The cooperating professional is Carrie Hetrick, intern Matthew Lago. Area of business dates June to August 2016 for a total of 300 hours. Anybody know that intern? No, I, I don't know. Uh, okay, motion is still for any second on the motion? Second. I can't get a second. Mr. Grotesky, a second. Mr. Grotesky, any question on the motion? Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is passed. Uh, move to employ the following summer help. Carly Frank, IT help, effective June 6, 2016, at $9.75 an hour. Motion, Mr. Stover. Any second on the motion? Second. Second, Mr. Nissen. Any question on the motion? Question. Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Move to approve the following textbook purchase for the 2016-17 school year, which is in the textbook budget according to the textbook cycle. It is uh, basic concepts of chemistry for the 11-12 uh, <coughs> chemistry honors uh, class at $22,275. Uh, motion, Mr. Stover. Any second on a motion? Second. Second, Mr. Kuchaski. Any question on a motion? Question. question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. That's all I have to see you, Mr. President. Nice job, Mr. Stobart. Policy, public relations, legislative, Mr. Manorazzo. I'm going to take a deep breath on this. <laughs> <laughs> you too. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to move to accept and file the minutes of the Superintendent's Information Committee meeting held on Monday, May 2nd, 2016. I have a motion, Mr. Manorazzo. Any second on the motion? Second. Second, Mr. Neiman. Any motion. question on the motion? <laughs> all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. I'd like to move to continue the resolution adopted on June 14, 1979, providing for a change in the roll call procedure for matters as outlined in Section 508, the Public School Code of 1949 during the 2016-17 school year. Copy of the resolution has filed with, the, I'm sorry, was filed with the June 14 board minutes. I have a motion for Mr. Manorazzo. Is second on the motion? Second. Second, Mr. Nimbic. Any question on the motion? Question. Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. I'd like to move to continue the bond coverage for the Secretary of the Board of School Directors, Mr. Brett Lego, and the Assistant Secretary of the Board of School Directors, Mrs. Janice Oliver, in the amount of fifty thousand for the twenty sixteen seventeen school year. That's not high enough. Okay. I have a motion, Mr. Manrazzo. Any second on motion? Second. Second, Mr. Kuchaski. Any question on motion? Question. Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. I'd like to move to grant permission to school board members, secretary, solicitor, and district administrators on a case-by-case -case basis to attend the annual convention of the National School Board Association, the American Association of School Administrators, or any other educational convention during the 2016-17 school year, which will be of educational or financial advantage to the Penn Trafford School District. In addition, the superintendent may approve any conference or workshop for any staff member which is conducted in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. An itemized verified statement of expenditures will be maintained in the business office and made a part of the record following all conference or workshops attended. Thank you. Motion, Mr. Manorazzo. Any second on the motion? Second. Second, Mr. <coughs> Nimbic. Any question on the motion? Question. Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. I'd like to move to authorize the administration to submit the federal program applications, such as Title I and Title IIA, for the 2016 17 school year. I have a motion, Mr. Manorazzo. A second on motion? Second. Second, Dr. Caution. Any question on motion? Question. Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. I'd like to move to approve participation in the Curriculum and Non Instructional Resource Services Department of Westmoreland Intermediate Unit Number 7, the Co op Drug Free Schools and Communities Act of 1986 for the 2016 2017 school year. I have a motion, Mr. Manorazzo. A second on motion? Second, Mr. Kuchaski. Any question on motion? Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Move to adopt attachment A of the IDEA BPL Rider Program narrative for the 2016 17 school year as requested by the Westmoreland Intermediate Unit. And it states as follows. Should I need to read the whole thing? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, Mr. Manorazzo, you have to read the whole thing. I should. The Penn Trafford School District hereby gives notice of its adoption of the Westmoreland Intermediate Unit's policies and procedures under the federal requirements of 34 CFR Part 300. <clears throat> a copy of the policies and procedures are maintained for review in the administrative offices. 
the IU adopted policies and procedures are implemented to fulfill the requirements of 22 PA Code Chapter 14 and the regulatory requirements on the Individuals with Disability Education Act, Part B. The subgrantee has in effect policies and procedures whereby the SCA may through uh, corrective action for failure to comply with Part B of the Act exercises its general supervisory authority to withhold all direct or indirect subsidies for special education and related services provided by the SEA to public agencies with the responsibility to offer a free, appropriate public education to eligible children out of Section, out of section 30, 34 CFR, etc. Okay, motion, Mr. Madam Resident. Second, a motion. Second, Second Mr. Kachansky. I just want to say, Mr. Madam <laughs> sometimes you can say as stated. I agree. As listed, okay, you can do that. But since it said Disabilities I Education Act, I, I don't think it been appropriate. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Just don't ask me to read it again. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. Okay, move to give final approval to the local board procedures, membership, and principles for governance and leadership. A copy of these documents will become a part of the official minutes of this meeting. I have a motion, Mr. Madras. We second a motion? Second. Second, Mr. Chesky. Any question on motion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. And we'd like to move to tentatively approve the following board policies and administrative regulations. Policy about investment of district funds, policy for food services, administrative regulations or public notification and civil rights complaint procedure, administrative regulations about professional standards for food service personnel, the revised policy for maintaining professional adult student boundaries, and administrative regulations maintaining professional adult and student boundaries. I have a motion, Mr. Madras. A second on motion? Second. Second with Dr. Caution. Any question on motion? Question. question. All in favor, signify <coughs> by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. I'd also like to move to appoint Dr. P.J. Trey as PSBA voting delegate for the 2016-17 school year. A motion by Mr. Mayor Madara. Second on motion? Second. Second Second. Dr. Caution. Any question on motion? Question. Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Mr. President, that's it. Nice job, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Tax and insurance census. Mr. Nimi. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the administration received quotations for all sports insurance for the 2016-17 school year. All quotations are, were reviewed by the administration and it is recommended that all sports insurance for 2016-17 be awarded to AG Administrators Incorporated with coverage as follows. All sports insurance plan one premium $10,300, $100 excess plan. And most Mr. Naming a second on motion. Second. Second, Mr. Nissing. Any question or motion? Question. Question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. The administration received quote, quotation for student accident insurance for 2016-17 school year. All quotations were reviewed by the administration. It is recommended that the student accident insurance for the 16-17 school year be awarded to AG administrators with coverage as follows. All students K-12 uh, $28 per year for school time, $124 a year for 24-hour coverage. A motion on Mr. Neeman. Can you second on the motion? Second. Second, Ms. Nissing. Any question on the motion? I do have a question. Okay. Mr. President. Sure. Just explain what that's for, uh, Brad. Uh, that is an optional policy available to students to buy. And again, if they want just school time coverage is $28 a year, if they want to be covered, uh, you know, 24-7, it's $124. Uh, but what coverage does that give them, though? If I'm a student, what, it's, when, I'm in, when, I'm, when I'm in my car, is that? It would be on school, well, the school coverage would be just during the school day in the school building. Right. It wouldn't be auto insurance, it'd be liability insurance uh, in case they were hurt, basically. Uh, all right, thank you. Okay, any more questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Move to adopt the Homestead and Farmstead Exclusion Resolution effective July 1st, 2016. A complete copy of the resolution will be filed with the official minutes of this meeting. A motion by Mr. Nimi. Any second on the motion? Second. Second, Mr. Krzyzewski. Any question on the motion? Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Move to authorize the continuance of the following Act 511 tax resolution and taxes for 2016-17 school year. A complete copy of the resolution will be filed with the official minutes of this meeting. Per capita tax, occupational residence tax, 
earned income tax, earned income, and net profits tax, realty transfer tax, and local services tax. I have a motion, mm -hmm. Mr. Neiman. Can you second a motion? Second. Second, Mr. Grachowski. Any question on motion? Mm -hmm. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Move that the Board of School Directors adopt the following resolution. Be it resolved, and it is hereby resolved by the School Board of School Directors of the Country Trafford School District, that there is hereby assessed, levied, and imposed for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2016 and ending June 30th, 2017, a tax on all real estate in the district subject to taxation at the rate of 80.25 mills, uh, which is $8.00. 2.5 cents for each $100 of assessed valuation of taxable property. <clears throat> the real estate tax rate for the Allegheny County portion located in Trafford Borough is 16.92 mills. Uh, Mr. Motion, Mr. Neiman, any second on the motion? <coughs> second. Second, Mr. Kuchask, any question on the motion? Question. Question, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Move to adopt the following resolution. Be it resolved, and it is hereby resolved by the school board of school directors of Penn Trafford School District that there is hereby levied, assessed, and imposed for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2016, and ending June 30th, 2017, a tax under section 679 of the public school code of 1949 as amended of $5 per capita on each resident or inhabitant of the school district 18 years of age or over as of July 1st, 2016, having a gross earnings of $12,000 or more. This tax shall not apply to any person who was not subject to this tax on the first day of the fiscal year and who during the fiscal year was also a resident or inhabitant of another school district imposing a like tax. If such person shall produce an exhibit to the tax collector an official receipt of the tax collector of such other district showing payment of said like tax for said fiscal year. This tax shall not apply to any person who does not attain or has not attained the age of 18 years of age or over on July 1st, 2016. The board may by resolution provide for complete or partial exemption based on total income as authorized by section, section 679 of the Public School Code of 1949 as amended. Uh, motion, Mr. Neiman, any second on the motion? Second. Second by Mr. Kuchowski. Any question on the motion? Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. That is Go. all I have, Mr. President. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Neiman. All right. Um, I see uh, by accident, for, uh, for some reason, we accidentally omitted it the PTA representative, and I see Mr. Muir has left. Mr. Lozero is in the audience. Is he back? Have you anything you want to say, Bill? No, sir. Okay, Mr. Scott. I put Yeah, he, he walked he out. Left. Well, he was accidentally omitted here, so I, uh, he left. It was that was just struck in action. I don't know if he wanted to say. You have nothing you want to add? Okay. Mr. Um, I just uh, got word, I believe our band is going to be in the parade with the penguins tomorrow. Oh, wow. That's nice. That's unofficial. Is that official? It's Mr. official. Wednesday. Okay. Is it Wednesday? Wednesday. Wednesday. Yes. I'm sorry. The parade starts at 1130. Okay. Good. That's nice. Yeah. I don't know how that happened, but that's very nice. Okay. Uh, so this is for Mr. Bronco. Uh, nothing this evening, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, any motion for it? German? Motion. Motion to Kachaski. A second on motion? Second, second Mr. Toshio. Nice meeting. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Do you have an SEIU meeting?